Well, hello there, fellow scouts and scout leaders. This is Matt Petrowski here creating your videos over at scouttracker.com. That's without the E, of course. So in this video, what I'm going to be showing you is how you can actually use Google's freely available services in order to plan out your Philmont itinerary. Now, the first place that you're going to probably be heading is the Philmont website. And what you're ultimately going to end up with is a guide. And each year they put out the guide and I think it comes out right around March timeframe prior to the year that you're actually taking your trek. So in this case, we're taking a trek in the year 2017, but it's not quite uh, March. March 15th is when they're going to release the itinerary guidebook or the updated one. So I'm working with the previous year. And many times if you want to do what I'm going to be showing you, you're going to be working with an itinerary guidebook that's the year before dated the year before you're actually going to take your hike. So here's what you need to do within this itinerary guidebook as a leader or if you're a scout and you're actually helping to choose or set up to choose the itinerary. One of the most difficult things is getting everybody to find out what they are interested in. Of course, you're going to go based off of elevation, based off mileage and basically what your patrol or what your crew, trek, whatever is going to be that you know you are able to do in terms of your hiking capabilities. But you also have the activities. So as I scroll down here, I'm going to scroll pretty fast. And I should mention that I am doing this on a Macintosh. I work on a Macintosh. I'm familiar with a Macintosh. Of course, you can do this on Windows, but there is a few things that are Macintosh uh, specific. So as we scroll here down um, and we can see that they've got programs included in itineraries. They have a lot of nice charts within these uh, the guidebook or the itinerary planning book. One of them that I have found helpful, I believe this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that we're looking at right here. So let's take a look at just a few of these. Um, you're going to have all of the different types of camps that are in all of the different areas. You're going to have uh, different events that you can do, and that's predominantly what we're interested in. Ultimately, what we'd like to end up with is something that tells us at least a little bit of information about the scouts that are attending, what they are interested in. Now, of course, we can sit down, we can have a meeting, and we can ask everyone, everybody raise your hand, who likes archaeology? Uh, everybody raise your hand who all likes uh, archery, who likes astronomy, who likes atlatl spear throwing. And we'll get a lot of people saying, yes, I like this versus yes, I, no, I don't like that. But as humans, it's very difficult for us to process all of that information as it comes in. It is much easier to capture it. So as I switch over to my browser, which is Chrome here, what I want to draw your attention to is through your standard Google account. Um, in this case, I'm logged into an account that I created for our troop. You can create a, create forms in order to capture data. In fact, I suggest that um, most any scouting unit actually use Google and its ability to collect data from your members of your troop or your pack or whatever, just to make it easier on yourself. The form that I created was this one right here and I've got it open, it is a Google form that allows you to capture information in a really cool way. Now there's really only one section. In fact, all of the different areas that you find right here are all of the different things that you can add to your Google form. For example, I can add a question, I can add text or a title description, I can add a picture, even a YouTube video, or I can add a section which will break things up. Now, the most simplest question is basically going to be, look like this. You can choose from all of these different options right here, where you can choose from time, date, um, multiple choice grid is what we're going to be using. You have drop downs, check boxes, multiple choice, paragraph answers, and then just above that, I think we've got a short answer right here. The multiple choice grid is a really nice option because what it allows you to do is basically put a some type of ranking on the individual items. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I accomplished this, where I got all of these items directly from the itinerary guide into my form, and then I basically put the form so that it reads like this. 
I've got uh, not interested, somewhat interested, interested, very interested, and then totally interested. So you can see that this is basically just a, a simple one to five ranking in terms of the interest, and you can apply that on each of the individual items. And this is so easy to set up once I've shown you how to do this. You simply go into your Google Drive, you click on the new button, one of the new options, you're going to go to the more option, and then down here you're going to have, well, it won't be down here for you, but you'll basically be able to choose a Google form. Now, once you create that form, you're simply going to add in all of the different items, and in this case, it's only one. It's just that multiple choice grid of all of the different activities that are possible on your Filmont Trek. So let's see how I actually got this in the easy way. And again, here's the thing that I'm dealing with on the Macintosh. I happen to know that there's a little bit of a trick here. I'm holding down the option key on the keyboard in order to actually work within Preview, which is an application on the Mac. If you're on Windows, unfortunately, you'll have to find another way of doing this. But you can see that rather than selecting all of the content by clicking and dragging, I can, with the option key held down, actually just select a specific area. So in this case, I was able to copy all of the events right here by just holding down the option key, marquee around those that I want, and then simply, uh, simply hitting uh, Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. With a text document open, I can simply just go in and I can actually paste all of those items. Now it just so happens that I do have a little bit of cleanup that I have to do. It does not come in super clean for me, but at least I don't have to type them in. So I wanna save some time. I can see right here what it did was um, archeology span and archery is down at the bottom and it basically copied them in a real random order, but I did get them out of the actual PDF supplied by Philmont Scout Ranch. I've also done things where I've just taken a couple of them at a time, copied that, just anything that saves me the time. Now what's really nice is if you're familiar with a text editor or something that al will allow you to sort, once I've got all of these cleaned up, for example, I can visually compare them right here and see I need rock climbing and repelling, and that is its own item. And then Rocky Mountain Fur Company is its own, and then Search and Wild Rescue. So it's got a lot of them that are on multiple lines. But ultimately, once I've got each of the items on the line, on each of their lines, in this particular program, I can actually sort this data by just simply sorting the lines. So it will quickly put these in a alphabetical order for me if you have some type of sort feature built into your solution or into your uh, text editor. Um, not a big thing. You don't actually have to put all of the items into a text editing document. You can just copy directly from the actual itinerary guide and go straight into your Google form. This really is just up to you. I just wanted to show an option that you can have if you want to get it into something where you can send it via email or basically have them as a list that you can import somewhere else. So ultimately, we're going to be copying each one of these and going over to our multiple choice grid and then simply pasting them in. The big time saver here is we can copy and paste rather than having to type them. So once we have the form, what's really nice in this regard is each of the forms in Google that you create allows you to capture the data into a spreadsheet. So when we look at the actual form here, well, those are responses right there, and those are responses. Um, we could take a look at the form itself. Um, I can click on this little send, or I can click on this little button right here to preview. Preview will actually open the form ready for it to take data from the user. You can see that on this particular one, I chose to, there's an option on the form itself to actually specify that a person enters an email address and it will email the person their own responses. Now again, you get to add as many questions as you want. In this case, I really only needed their full name because I know who the kids are in our troop or the scouts. And here you can see the actual form where archeology, span you've got your scale right here. And so it's very easy for a scout or an adult to say, you know what, I'm somewhat interested in archeology. span I am totally interested in archery, astronomy, maybe, et cetera. And as you go down, once you've filled out all of the items, you can finally submit your response. 
Now here comes the great part. Because all of the data is directly captured into a spreadsheet, which you can actually access right here on the form, what you're going to do is you're going to click from the questions area onto the responses area. And on the responses area, let's see, I have one over here, I believe. This is where you're going to be able to see up towards the top, there will be a little button right here where you can actually click to create the spreadsheet automatically, or you can link that into an existing spreadsheet. Now, when it comes to the responses, what's really nice is on the form, you can see information about all of the people, all of the emails of the people who had already responded, knowing who has not, depending on who you've sent it to, but also the full names, and I've made these anonymous. But here's the great thing. You can actually see, based on the different types, so not interested is blue, totally interested is purple, I can see that we do not have a whole lot of interest in archaeology. In other words, I get this nice graphical representation of all of the responses. So it's a little bit of a pain. I can see somewhat interested here that Baldy Mountain Hike is a somewhat interested, and we've got one that is totally interested. Otherwise, everybody else, this just is a, is a tool that really helps you gauge what your interest is on the activities, which will allow you to correlate this information against the type of treks that you want to pick. So there's a few other ways that you can actually look at this information because I think you get the idea here that the responses will allow us to see the information, but if you don't like this side scrolling that I'm doing right here where you really sort of forget what the colors are because the legend doesn't stay linked or static up at the top, there is another way to do this when you're actually looking at the data. I believe if you choose on form here, and then you choose show a summary of responses from within the spreadsheet, the Google Sheet that captures the data, you will get output that will look like this. And again, I've anonymized it, but we can see right here that what we're able to do is we're able to scroll down and actually look at the percentages and the actual counts on an individual activity basis. So what this gives me is something to go back with the scouts and say, look at, Here's what we've got going on. Most people are, you know, they're somewhat interested in the Baldy Mountain hike, but as we go through this and go look for the very interested, we've got a lot of people who want to see, at least of those who have submitted, the cantina. Uh, not a whole lot of interest and so forth. One thing to keep in mind, too, is that as the boys actually submit their responses, they are not necessarily familiar with the activities themselves unless the name of the activity is pretty clear. Cowboy action shooting, pretty obvious. But Continental Tie and Lumber Company, the boys may not know what they're actually getting into, and that's where they actually get to do the uh, up and down push cars um, across the railroad. So something that's probably pretty interesting. So you would have to ad address to them, for those two that are not necessarily interested, Clarification is definitely going to be needed. This is just a preemptive tool in order to find out some data responses. Look at that. Phishing is across the board here in terms of not interested all the way to totally interested. But again, this is just a tool. It's just one of many tools that you can use in order to plan your Philmont hike. So that's what I have for this video. I hope it is helpful for anyone else who is going to be planning any type of trip where there's a lot of things to choose from. Of course, use Google Forms for many more things than just Philmont within your scouting unit. They are extremely helpful for collecting registrations and all kinds of information. Google provides them for free, and hey, take advantage of them. So that's what I've got for this video. This is Matt Petrowski for Scout Tracker, creating the videos over at Scout Tracker. And as always, keep on having a great time out there doing all of your wonderful scouting events.